And some of you are going to be waking up to flooded roads in your neighborhood. A viewer sent us this video from Sterling, and that means your drive might be a little slower this morning. We have team coverage this morning. Erica and Ed are keeping an eye on the roads and your forecast. But first, Brianna Fernandez is live at Red Rocks this morning. And Brianna, it was a really scary situation for people there last night. Yeah, it was that hailstorm came down strong on, on a lot of people who were attending the concert late last night here at Red Rocks. Some say that it was straight out of a horror movie and we actually have some video and pictures that we want to show you. Take a listen to what people had to deal with. Now you can hear people screaming, running, trying to take shelter as fast as they can as hail blasted through the venue last night. West Metro Fire says nearly 100 people were treated on scene for cuts and broken bones, and at least seven of them were taken to the hospital. Now Red Rocks tweeted around 8 last night saying there was a weather delay. Then 30 minutes later, they got the all clear. But shortly after that, that's when concert goers said it just turned into chaos. We hunkered down by a brick wall and under a tree. I'm, I'm covered in tree leaves and uh, the three of us just hunkered down and we, we just kept saying, hold your head down, hold your head down. It was hail at least the size of my fingers, like right here, just hitting my back so hard. But to keep her okay, yeah. I was just telling her it was going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah, everyone was trying to stay safe last night. Right now, you're taking a look at some of the hail that I'm seeing here at the Red Rocks parking lot. And we actually were walking around because I wanted to see if there were some missing car pieces. And shortly enough, there was. There's a lot of car pieces just scattered around everywhere here in the parking lot right now. Uh, but again, a very scary situation for a lot of concert goers who were here at Red Rocks last night. Corey, Jordan. And Ed. As, as, as we take a look, we do see those showers and thunderstorms. They're all moving off toward the border area right now. You see the lightning strikes going along with them, and we will see a little bit of clearing here. Sunshine by about 8 or 9 o'clock, but enough sunshine to get the activity going once again. Yep, showers and thunderstorms, some reaching severe levels once again this afternoon from the metro area all the way out onto the eastern plains. And then to this evening, or actually tomorrow morning, at about 1 a.m., they start to clear, so they won't be as long a duration as they were last night. They will clear up quicker and with that we will see more in the way of sunshine for tomorrow and that's the good news. So 77 degrees today. Yes, late storms again. Some could be heavy, but 85 tomorrow more in the way of sunshine. Sunny skies on Saturday with 84 degrees, 81 for your Sunday and Monday. We're in the mid 80s with plenty of sunshine. Ed, thank you. We do want to show you the drive from Sky 9. They're over I-70 and 225 where it does look like volume is building here. Want to go ahead and bring it to our CDOT camera at this hour because we're actually tracking some pretty significant delays on northbound 225 approaching I-70. There's a crash just up ahead of this camera, and that's what's causing these delays. So we want to take you to our graphics and kind of talk about how this is impacting your drive. Seven-minute backup is what you're already dealing with on northbound 225. Uh, just past Mississippi is where things start to get congested all the way toward I-70. We've got a right lane blocked up where that crash is. We're also dealing with a pretty small closure on eastbound I-70 because of flooding between Air Park Road and Watkins. So crews have the interstate blocked off and there's a little detour right around there. We're dealing with another flooding closure at this hour as well. Highway 86 is shut down between I-70 and Kiowa at this hour. So that stretch not passable. I-70, of course, a workaround option, but you want to plan ahead and give yourself lots of extra time if you need to do that detour. Good advice, Erica. Thank you. A lot of flights are impacted as well this morning. So far, 77 delays, 62 cancellations. That number has been growing throughout the morning. Yesterday, there were more than 700 delays. So if you're flying out today, keep an eye on your flight before you head to the airport. And as always, we'd want to see the weather in your area. You can text those to us at 303-871-1491. Overnight, we've gotten pictures of hail the size of golf balls, video of all that lightning, and of course, everything that that happened last night at Red Rocks, like Brianna was reporting. We're going to keep checking back in throughout the morning to see what else you're seeing in your area. And you can track the weather all day long on 9 News Plus or by downloading our free 9 News app.
New overnight, the oxygen supply for the missing Titanic sub has run out. Crews say the sub had enough to last until just after 5 o'clock this morning. But right now, the search for the five people on board is still going. In fact, it is ramping up. Within the last hour, the Coast Guard sent what it's called a remotely operated vehicle to the ocean floor. And France is now joining the U.S. and Canada in the search. Yesterday, sonar buoys detected sound in the water, but it's still not clear if that came from the sub or somewhere else. We'll keep you updated on the search throughout the morning as we learn more. Right now, police in Lakewood are looking for the person they say killed two people in a mobile home. Police found out about this on Monday night, but they just let us know yesterday. They say someone called them from a mobile home park near Colfax in Wadsworth. The caller said they found two bodies inside a home there. Police identified one of the victims as Deborah Thomas. They are still trying to get in touch with the family of the other victim. They're asking anyone with information to call Crime Stoppers. That number is on your screen. It is 720-913. 7867. A woman will spend more than 40 years in prison for starting an apartment fire that killed a five year old boy in Aurora. It happened at an apartment complex on Evans Avenue in January of 2022 around 1 o'clock in the morning. Investigators say 39 year old Alondra Michelle set a blanket on fire after a fight with her boyfriend. The fire spread throughout the complex. Firefighters rescued a five year old boy, Abner Salmarin Bautista, from his bed. He died at the hospital. In March, Michelle pleaded guilty to four counts, including second degree murder and arson. She was sentenced to 42 years in prison. Taking a live look at Washington, D.C. right now, it's going to be a busy day in our nation's capital. Today, Supreme Court justices will meet behind closed doors. They are considering whether to add a high-profile Second Amendment case in their next term. It focuses on a federal law banning people with domestic violence restraining orders from having guns. A lower court decided that law was unconstitutional. Advocates for domestic violence survivors worry that getting rid of the law would make it easier for abusers to get or keep their guns. Here in Colorado, we have a law stopping people with an an active domestic violence protection order from having guns. Also today, the names of the people who paid New York Representative George Santos's bail will be released. Santos pleaded not guilty to 13 counts of fraud, money, money laundering, and theft of public funds. Two people paid his $500,000 bail. Santos has suggested those people are family members, and he said he might be willing to go to jail instead of revealing who they are. News organizations and the House Ethics Committee have been asking for their names. They say it's important the public knows, and the committee might end up looking into whether Santos violated gifting rules. Santos Santos's lawyer says he's concerned the two people who paid that bill will face harassment if they're publicly identified. Colorado's Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert plans to force a floor vote today to impeach President Biden. But reports suggest she has lost the support of fellow Republicans. Boebert introduced articles of impeachment against the president this week for how he handled immigration at the U.S.-Mexico border. The House Rules Committee announced last night they would vote to send the articles back to the Homeland Security and Judiciary Committees. That allows Republicans to avoid a direct vote. More than 300,000 children in Colorado qualify for a free or reduced lunch during the school year. But school's out for the summer, and not every district has a program to provide those lunches right now. It means added stress for some families, especially those already dealing with food insecurity. Today, photojournalist Joe Swanson shows us the food truck for kids helping bridge that gap in Larimer County. Okay, get ready. We're going to have a busy day. Right behind us, you're watching production of our summer food service program. How many do we need in this one? Something. Our volunteers are here today packing kids' meals that are going to be distributed throughout Larimer County. There's a lot of kids out of school. They need meals. Parents need meals for them. Welcome to lunch with kids. <laughs> On average, we're probably doing up to 750 meals a day. You're throwing them in a bag, tying them up, and then they'll hand them out. Uh, you know, the, the kitchen lunch labs will hand them out. So we do have nutritional guidelines that we are required to follow. Um, each meal has to contain a one ounce whole grain component, a vegetable component, a fruit component, 1% uh, milk, or fat-free flavored, uh, two ounce portion of protein. You need to like get moving in your body. I'm a foster parent, and so our number of children range. Um, and so right now we just have our daughter, but sometimes we have lots more kids. And it was just really nice to have lunch provided that I didn't have to make, you know, or manage the children while I was making it. And financially, it was really a benefit too. This really does help, and we're grateful. At the end of the day, those kids needed a meal. They came to you, they needed a meal, and they got to eat. 
The food bank for Larimer County runs the lunch lab through mid August, about a week before school starts back up. Any child can get a meal from the truck, which makes several stops a day between Loveland and Fort Collins. Your donations help to buy the food given out to that lunch lab, and you can give now in our nine cares Colorado share spring drive. Scan that QR code to donate now or give when you shop at your local King Supers. For more information, go to 9news.com slash 9cares. And one thing you want to know about our weather today is the clouds are beginning to clear. Look at Fort Collins with mostly clear skies. We've got Boulder with mostly clear skies. Downtown, we continue to see the clouds. We'll see a little bit of a clearing, but the showers and thunderstorms are back this afternoon. And yes, they could be severe once again.